Hello, my name is Miss Allison, and today I'll be reading to you from Ground Zero, an Alan Grant's book, a novel from 9-11. Bugs Bunny and Designer Jeans. Sprinklers rang down from the ceiling of the underground mall, and in seconds, Brandon was soaked through to the skin. He squinted, trying to see in the rain and the darkness that there were burn marks around and below the elevator doors by the stairs as though giant balls of flame had blasted down all the way from above. There was no fire, but Brandon could see, but the sprinkler still ran. The water on the floor was ankle deep. Port Authority and New York City Police guided people toward the exit to Church Street on the other side of the mall. Brandon didn't need direction. He knew this mall like he knew his own neighborhood. There was a familiar coffee shop to his left and a Banana Republic just ahead on the right. Beyond that would be the Gap and the Speedo store, where Brandon liked to laugh at the male mannequins in their skimpy bathing suits. Farther along, he knew was the Dune Reed, where he and his father bought some cough medicine and snacks, and a Sobraro, where they sometimes grabbed a quick slice of pizza before heading home. Keep moving, the police called through a bullhorn. The mall looked very different than it had the morning. The main hallway was like a gushing aqueduct during a storm, but the electricity was still on in the stores. TVs ran, music played, the lights glowed, but there was no one there. No clerks, no salespeople, no cooks, no customers. For the first time in Brandon's life, the mall felt incredibly garnished. The lights were too bright and the music too happy. The things for sale, designer jeans and Lego sets and plastic dinosaurs, sunglasses and necklace and greeting cards and remote control cars. How could anyone care about that stuff? How could any of that matter when there were people trying to fly planes into buildings? When there were people trapped and burning and broken and jumping and dying, how could any of this ever matter again after what Brandon had seen? A woman near them stopped and cried, and Richard put his arm around her shoulder. Come on, we gotta go, he told her. It's going to be okay. They came to an intersection. To the right were more shops. To the left, past borders, a bookstore were stairs down to the subway and the escalator up to Church Street. Straight ahead of them was a Warner Brothers store with the Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck statues outside the entrance. How many afternoons had Brandon and his dad spent watching Batman and Superman and Looney Tunes cartoons? They were both big fans and, looked, and they loved going to the Warner Brothers store and looking at the superhero t-shirts and stuffed cartoon animals and movie posters. All of it was drowning in sprinklers now. As the water poured down, Brandon pictured his dad trapped in the windows in the world in the world center. Smoke pouring in and no water to put out the fire climbed up from below. Brandon, we have to go, Richard told him. We're almost out. They have phones in the stores, Brandon said, wiping his eyes. We could try dad again. Not exac exactly the best place to stop, Richard said, squinting down into the water coming down from the sprinklers. Come on, we'll call from payphone out on the street. The ground beneath Brandon's feet suddenly began to vibrate, and Brandon threw his arms out to steady himself. It felt like a subway car rattling by beneath them. But this time, no subway car. The rumbling grew and grew, and Brandon and Richard just had time to look at each other in horror before something exploded above and behind them. It looked like the whole mall collapsed in on them at once, and with a war like a garbage truck, a blast of smoke and dust lifted Brandon off his feet and hurled him into the darkness. <laughs>